Okay. Speaking of the midterms, I mentioned 33 days away, and we want to introduce you to a, a particular candidate from the state of California. The state of California has sued the federal government 44 times since President Trump was elected as Democrat Attorney General Javier Becerra looks to stall the Trump agenda. Now, earlier, we spoke to Becerra's challenger, Republican Judge Stephen Bailey, about his mission to take over as the top cop in California. All right, Judge Stephen Bailey, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, we are just 33 days uh, from Election Day uh, in, uh, well, all over the country. The midterms are coming up November 6th. Uh, you're challenging the current Attorney General, the Democrat, Javier Becerra. Uh, you have said in the past that, um, as a Republican in California, that fighting an uphill battle might be a good thing uh, for a candidate. It might, might make a candidate uh, that much stronger. So what do you mean by that as you... Um, well, as you take on uh, Becerra in California, what do you mean by that it can make you a better candidate? How's the campaign going? Well, the campaign's going very well, um, but it makes you a better candidate because it uh, keeps you focused each and every day on the campaign, talking to voters and citizens here in California. Um, it's not a... It doesn't leave you overconfident at any point in time, right. and particularly in the state of California. We've got a class of politicians in Sacramento who are overconfident all the time, and because they're so overconfident, they don't think about what you and I have to deal with every day with homelessness and mental illness and uh, uh, drug abuse and drug dependency in this state. Um, as a candidate that's always running from behind, my focus is always on the problems of the everyday uh, voter, taxpayer, right. wage earner, who's trying to make a better life for himself, herself, her kids, and grandkids. Well, um, public safety, obviously, on the minds of all Americans. Public safety, definitely, on the minds of Californians when they go to the polls in 33 days. Um, Senate Bill 10, I want to I touch in on this. Uh, it was signed into law last month by Governor Brown, and it essentially gets rid of the cash bail system. Um, now, explain to our viewers how that might affect uh, someone's uh, sleep at night, even, how it might affect public safety in California. Well, it's absolutely going to affect public safety, and it, it goes two ways. You know, when the legislature, when Jerry Brown signed that bill, apparently He's never read the California Constitution because um, Article 1, Section 12 of the California Constitution, which lays out our rights as citizens of the state of California, provide for cash bail in the state of California. Uh, but that not, notwithstanding, what this repeal of cash bail does in California is on the one hand, it's going to wholesalely um, release individuals that I, as a judge, for my eight and a half years as a superior court judge, would want to keep in custody. Right. Because it takes away the ability of human beings to make those determinations. It's going to have a checklist uh, so that you make a determination, or not you, but some unnamed uh, bureaucrat decides who gets out of jail. Um, but on the flip side, it's going to keep people in custody who would ordinarily have been able to post bail and get out within, you know, six or seven hours. And, you know, it's a, it's a crazy system. It's as if um, nobody spent any time trying to figure out how to make a, a system that works more fairly. Right. And I want to say it's like centuries old, by the way, in terms of posting bail and being able to uh, exit uh, the jail based on the crime, of Exactly. And, and the reason historically you had bail was so that the king couldn't keep you in custody forever. Right. Right. Uh, well, I want to switch gears. Uh, I know that, you know, public safety, again, uh, at the forefront of a lot of folks' minds, but also at the forefront of a lot of folks' minds is border security. And when it comes to the Trump administration's efforts with border security, talk about the effect that Attorney General uh, Javier Becerra, a very outspoken Democrat, of course, a longtime, lifetime Democrat, how is he stunting that process? How is he, how is he halting uh, the Trump administration's efforts as they attempt to secure the border, specifically between California and Mexico? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's craziness. What uh, Brissetta, Brown, and the legislature have done is literally make California 
uh, less safe. What, uh, what they succeeded in doing through sanctuary state uh, legislation was saying our uh, sheriffs and first responders can't assist the federal government, uh, at least not effectively. That uh, you can't go, if you're um, federal authorities, you can't go to the local jail and pick up people who have committed uh, serious, violent, uh, dangerous crimes. We let them back into the community and, and force federal authorities, including ICE, to go into our neighborhoods, making our neighborhoods less safe. That's crazy. I mean, it, where would you want to pick up a law, a, a, a criminal? But right. at the jail, if you have them at the jail, it just makes perfect sense. That's where you get the person. But on their side, um, by trying to frustrate the federal government, we've got a flood of drugs, human traffickers, um, gang members coming across our borders um, and no way to effectively prevent it. As Attorney General, my first priority is to address the concerns Californians have. They want safe neighborhoods. They want their kids and their grandkids to be protected. Right. Um, and, you know, that sometimes requires us as state authorities to work closely with the federal government. I'm going to work closely with the federal government. Frankly, I think sanctuary state's unconstitutional anyway. I'm going to tell the court that. Okay, and, uh, you know, and I want to say that Becerra, by the way, um, uh, has called a border wall medieval. <laughs> That's a quote. Um, now, um, I, I want to throw a few numbers at you. 44 lawsuits filed against the Trump administration from the state of California uh, over the last 21 months. That's over the fiscal year 2016, uh, or I'm sorry, 2017, 2018. Now, the taxpayer, the effect on the ta taxpayer, the price tag for those lawsuits, $9.2 million. That's up from $2.8 million before Trump came into office. It's a $7 million uh, difference on the taxpayer. So what are your thoughts now? Because, uh, you know, I have this quote here from Becerra. He says, the potential harm California faces from the administration's actions, both economically and socially, far outweighs the cost to taxpayers. What are your thoughts there, as think, Californians already pay a lot to exist? You know? Yeah, I think his statement is absolutely ridiculous. Quite frankly, uh, as a judge... And, quite, and as a practicing lawyer in our courts for some 18 and a half years prior to taking the bench, I know that litigation is your last resort, not your first resort. And I'm not suggesting the federal government does everything right and California ought to uh, protect its citizens and its economy, um, the environment. I, I fully favor being aggressive against the federal government when it is appropriate. But things like suing on the border wall, for example, mm -hmm. is borderline frivolous. Why? Because Congress had already exempted that wall from the actual litigation that the attorney general's in, involved in. What was so crazy is that um, a federal judge here in San Diego, one that uh, President Trump had insulted, mm -hmm. he couldn't even convince that judge right. that the uh, border wall ought to be stopped. Right. And when you can't um, convince a judge uh, at the beginning of a case, that's sending a pretty clear indication uh, that the rest of your case is hopeless. And, you know, just spending money, just litigating because there's a, a tweet out of Washington right. makes no sense for the citizens of California. Quite frankly, when I'm attorney general, if there's an issue of such magnitude that it requires potential litigation. I'm going to go back to Washington and sit down with the federal authorities first and see if we can't negotiate out a, re a fair resolution. My first goal is not to sue. All right. I want to get uh, two more quick ones here. I want to get your thoughts on the Supreme Court nominee, uh, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Of course, um, of course, he's currently or used to sit on the second highest court in the country there in D.C. He's fighting to be on the highest court in the nation. Um, a lot is being said about his temperament in his hearings. Uh, they're moving away from these sexual assault allegations, it seems, and moving more toward his temperament during the hearings. What temperament does a judge need to have as a, as a judge, as, as a retired judge, what does the temperament need to be, and should he be judged himself on that? Well, he shouldn't be judged on his, quote, temperament in a 
congressional hearing. He served for 12 years on the second highest court in the country, the appellate district, circuit district of Washington. Uh, no one during that 12 years has ever complained about his temperament on the bench. The fact that he defended his reputation and the reputation of his family, all of us would want to stand up and be counted. If somebody attacked my kids, attacked my wife, attacked me, I think I have a constitutional, by the way, First Amendment right mm -hmm. to stand up and defend myself. That has nothing to do with his ability or his temperament while he's been on the bench. Um, a judge needs to be able to be fair as a, essentially a referee, to listen to the evidence, compare it to the facts that are, or listen to the evidence, mm -hmm. which are the facts, compare it to the law and come to a fair and just decision. You shouldn't be berating uh, litigants that are in front of you. Nobody's ever said that uh, Kavanaugh has ever done any of that. Right. Uh, and in fact, his record was exemplary before the um, Democrats in Washington did this ambush on him. To call it a political hit was an understatement. All right. Well, last thing, uh, Judge Bailey, tell us about, uh, uh, we've, you've got a website. We're going to put your website on the screen here. Uh, tell us what, tell our viewers what they can do to help out 33 days out from election night. Well, they can um, make sure you get out and vote. That's the most important. Uh, get your friends and your neighbors to get out and vote. Again, that's critical. And I'm talking to anyone that's uh, listening to this, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent, we, you need to vote because this is a critical election. But moreover, you can go to my website, you can uh, volunteer to help the campaign, whether you're in California or anywhere else in the country, volunteering um, for the campaign can be done from anywhere. Moreover, you know, money, as a Democrat politician here in California once said, is the money's milk of politics, and any donations would be much appreciated. We're working tirelessly, day and, quite frankly, many nights, uh, to win this election. California deserves a, an attorney general whose focus is on California, and that's the type of attorney general that I'm going to be when I'm elected on uh, November 6th. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.